good morning welcome all of you again in the last class we started discussing about analysis of the spectra of various heteronuclei we started with fluorine nmr i said fluorine is spin off nuclei 100% abundant and it is very friendly nuclei and we took several examples analyze the spectra of fluorine where you could extract fluorine fluorine coupling heteronuclear coupling between fluorine and abundant spins like phosphorus and also we we could get coupling with rare spins like dilute spins at the same time i also said about what is called the effect of isotopic substitution on the fluorine chemical shifts we took several examples i showed what happens when i take the molecule like ch2 chf2br2 like that CHF2Br2, where we saw we saw that in the fluorine, because of isotope of four different types of isomers present, because of two different isotopes of bromine, we got four peaks, two were overlapped and appear like a triplet. And we took another example like that, and several examples of fluorine where isotopic effect is dominant. And then we went into phosphorus NMR, analyzed several of the spectra, and I came to one molecule where we could sh uh, show that. One, phosphorus can ex experience coupling with proton, fluorine, nitrogen, etc. Three or four different uh, heteronuclear couplings, homon heteronuclear couplings, which gave a very complex spectrum. And I had no time, and I could uh, rush it up. But I will repeat with that, and then continue further with the analysis of the spectra of other nuclei today, including phosphorus and some other nuclei. Okay, let us come back. And this is the molecule. Which we started. This we wanted to see the phosphorus thirty one NMR of this molecule. There is only single phosphorus. Obviously, we have only single chemical shift, and chemical shift is written as minus sixty three point four ppm with respect to H three PO eighty five percent H three PO four is the reference that we use for phosphorus. And look, spectrum looks fairly complex for a single phosphorus being present. It is understandable. First of all, you should see. There is a long-range coupling of phosphorus with proton. I mean, long, large coupling, not long-range, one-bond coupling, which is of the order of nearly 836 hertz. Huge coupling is there. So it is going to be a doublet like this. And then further, the phosphorus experiences coupling with two fluorines, which are chemically equivalent. It is a PF2 group. So what is what going to happen is, see. One J P F is there, which is going to be a triplet. One line of the line, this thing is one line of the doublet is split into a triplet because of two equivalent fluorine. Another line of the doublet, which is here, also split into a triplet because of two fluorine, and it is one to one triplet here. Similarly, this is one to one triplet. There are two triplets here. A one doublet was there initially because of H H P coupling, and that doublet became. Two triplets. Each line of the doublet became a triplet. That is because of coupling with PF two. Further, what is happening is that this also experiences coupling with two nitrogen. See, this is a very interesting thing we should see. Two nitrogens are present. So, what does it mean? Each line of this triplet. There are two triplets now. Each line of this triplet is further split into a triplet because of two nitrogens which have equal coupling with phosphorus. As a consequence, you are going to get three here a triplet like this, three lines, one to one triplet. That coming that is coming because of coupling between phosphorus and nitrogen. See, there is lot of coupling. One bond HP coupling is huge. Then PF two coupling is huge. Now phosphorus nitrogen coupling is also there. That is also quite large, about fifty four hertz. So each line of the triplet became another triplet, and that's what is expanded here. One of each one of them. See, there are six like that. One of them I have put here to show there is a one bond p-n coupling, two p-n couplings, making it a triplet. Further, this phosphorus also experiences coupling with two protons, two equivalent protons like the NH2 groups, which are there, two protons. So there are four protons. It is going to be a sept, you know, a quintet pattern like this, or a septet, whatever it is. You are going to get pattern like that. Each one of the triplet. Further split into a quintet, quintet like this. Okay, that's how it comes. 
So this single phosphorus experiencing one couple, one bond coupling, one bond coupling, one bond coupling, and two bond couplings. So many couplings are there. The overall pattern is a doublet of triplets of triplets of quintets. Total number of lines we expect is ninety. Two into three into three into five. See this one simple phosphorus giving ninety peaks. Fortunately, many of them are you know easily analyzable by a first order way. Most of them are weakly coupled because only one chemical shift is there and all of couplings are quite well dispersed. So we are going to get the information very easily. That's it. So next another simple example I want to take for phosphorus thirty one. We took the example of PCl three. Okay, in this case. Very surprising. We got four peaks. There is only single phosphorus. Remember CFCl3 peak we discussed in the fluorine NMR. So CFCl3 gave rise to four peaks because of chlorine has two isotopes: chlorine 35 and chlorine 36. Chlorine, I'm sorry, 37, 35 and 37. Each of them has different percentage of abundance. This is 0.76, that is 76 percent. Other is 0.24. As a consequence. We could calculate the populations, pop, distribution of populations of different isotopomers of CFCl3, and we arrived at four different peaks with intensities 195, 30, and 3 that we could easily interpret. Exactly analogous to that, phosphorus also. You can think of you now varieties of isotopomers here. First of all, there are two chlorine isotopes. Chlorine thirty five and chlorine thirty seven. I can say there are several isotopes. First one, all chlorine could be thirty five. That is one possibility. Seventy six percent abundance. Second, all chlorine can be thirty five. That is twenty four percent abundance. That is also fine. Then we have other possibilities. Two other possibilities where two chlorine could be thirty five, one thirty seven. There are three such possibilities. Two chlorine could be thirty seven, one is thirty five. Again, three such possibilities. So, variety of combination analogous to your CFCl3 analysis. What we did, we can also do it, and then each peak po population can be worked out. First of all, we took this one, 75 percent, 76 percent abundant, and this is a strong peak. Scale it as 100. With respect to that, other intensities can be calculated. Next one is this possibility. There are three such possibilities. And then intensity. If you multiply by three, scale it with respect. This, this is how it is. The next possibility is again two thirty-seven, one thirty-five. Three such possibilities. And the last one is all the thirty-three or thirty-seven somewhere here weak intensity. You are not seeing it. You understand? Four such different isotopomers are there, and the intensity of the each peak can be worked out based on the, the distribution of population, statistical distribution of population. So that's it. So we discuss a lot about uh, phosphorus and NMR, fluorine and NMR. We we'll switch over to another important isotope, silicon. Silicon and NMR is also very often done, especially when the people are working with glasses and then zeolites, etc. Silicon and aluminium and NMR routinely done. So, however, in our case, we don't take the material or examples of that. We will look at the example of simple one or two organic molecules. Again, silicon is a friendly nuclei, spin half nuclei, abundance is. 4.67% and chemical shifts are usually much smaller than 13c chemical shift in common organic solvents this chemical shift of silicon is much smaller than carbon 13 that just for information but well, let us look at the silicon in nmr of tetramethyl silen how many peaks we expect it depends upon two types of experiment you can do you can do silicon in nmr With all protons completely decoupled, in which case we get a singlet. There is a possibility all twelve equivalent protons can couple to silicon. You can get proton coupled spectrum also. How does this spectrum appear when it is decoupled and coupled? We look at it, and this is the silicon spectrum proton decoupling. Fantastic! There are no more couplings of protons with silicon. Then why we have a doublet here? Two satellites, weak peaks. I have already written here. You see, it is carbon thirteen coupling to silicon one bond, one bond direct, and four such carbons are there. They are all equivalent, so you are going to get a single doublet. Okay, carbon coupling to silicon, and it appears as a satellite. We are going to get measure. If you measure the separation, 
you get one bond silicon carbon coupling as i have been telling you last time also to i told you again i am repeating when you are observing dilute spin like uh, silicon itself then you don't worry about abundance of that that you treat as a abundant spin itself and then other dilute spin coupled to that gives rise to satellites like if i look for proton silicon is a satellite but i am looking at silic silicon itself that i can treat as abundant spin then carbon coupled to that will be a satellite so we have got satellite peaks each line of the satellite you know split into the because of silicon it is a doublet and each split into half okay because of silicon one bond silicon carbon coupling okay this is 13 c satellites another thing is proton coupled silicon n number the same tetramethyl silicon i don't do the decoupling how many peaks we expect very important if you remember 2ni plus 1 rule here and now there are 12 protons which are equivalent put it 2 into 12 into half plus 1 then you are going to get 13 peak it is called tried decuplet spectrum 13 peaks are there you can start counting from that see see here there are peaks and of course you also see carbon 13 satellites whose separation we already measured in the other case there are 13 peaks and separation of each of them gives you silicon proton coupling two bond silicon proton coupling you are going to get and this is how it is so you should get 13 peaks how do you get the intensity of all those thing how do you arrive at it of course you have to go to pascal triangle when there are that 12 protons coupled what is the intensity pattern like we have for two protons coupled equivalent 1 to 1 when three are coupled 1 3 3 1 quartet like that we know go to the pascal triangle and find out how many peaks we expect what is the intensity pattern it will very easily work you can work out and this how it is all 13 peaks are there okay and the last highest intensity peak is 924 compared to that other peak is only 1% intensity that's why we are not seeing that okay this is the proton coupled tm spectrum now we can go to another molecule a simple molecule look at this molecule an organic molecule we are looking at silicon but here we have we have two types of experiment done again proton decoupled and proton coupled when there are proton decoupled what are you going to see a single single peak that's what only one silicon is there we got a singlet of course we got two satellites why is the satellite what is the satellite coming from because of coupling of silicon with carbon so this is going to this separation if i measure i'm going to get silicon carbon one bond coupling that is because of carbon 13 satellites this is decoupled spectrum there is also coupled spectrum it is it is plotted in two bunches two expansions separately there is a break breakage in the plot here you can see and why it is coming first of all remember there is one bond proton silicon proton coupling here this is a one bond silicon proton coupling it is huge quite large what is that going to do it will split silicon peak into two peaks a doublet of the order of 175 hertz see he can separate out here is starting with that somewhere around 75 this is about 125 you can see the separation if you accurately calculate silicon separation one bond silicon proton coupling is 175 hertz it is a doublet but what is going to happen now we also have two bond silicon coupling with proton three bond silicon coupling with proton this one can couple to this this and this there are three such ch2s what is going to happen now each line of this doublet is going to be triplet of triplet of triplets nine lines further it also experiences coupling then what will happen this each of these nine line will become a quartet 36 lines will be there in each of them each bunch should contain 36 peaks if all the couplings are resolved so it has two bond three bond couplings it is very very complex spectrum okay but all of them are not resolved as a consequence only bunch few bunches are seen here at least you can get one bond coupling and if with with, with a bit difficulty you can even expand and try to get two bond silicon proton coupling with ch2 expansion of this similar molecule now you can also see again there is there is a perfect symmetry along this axis there is one bond silicon proton coupling 
it splits into a doublet. Of course, this is plot and decoupled. You get a single peak, but if you carefully see there is another peak here which possibly gives an indication there could be two different types of silicon here. Okay, other is not resolved very well, but an indication there may be two types of silicon. It is okay. Let us not worry about that chemistry part as far as the structure is concerned that we will worry later. But right now the proton decoupled silicon spectrum gives a singlet because there is only one silicon both there are two but both are chemically equivalent because of symmetry. And this large separation is a one bond silicon coupling to 215 hertz. And further each of this thing is split into oh, sorry this CH2 CH2 2 CH2 what is the pattern you are going to get? triplet of triplets and many of them will overlap and we get a septet like pattern. Remember we worked out lots of what will happen when you get triplet of triplet like that. Further each line of this is experiencing coupling with 2 CA 3s. As a consequence it is going to be a very very complex pattern. This is the type of spectrum you are going to get. Okay. Okay, that, uh, that is one or two example about silicon enamel. You understood silicon enamel is especially if you go to organic molecule, there will be hardly couple of silicons are there. <coughs> I am sorry, maybe one or two silicons. Very easily two chemicals will be there. And if you carefully see decoupled and coupled spectrum, you can get all the information provided you are able to resolve everything. Analyzing the molecule like this, which is very complex, all are not resolved. So, it would be difficult, but you can do an special, special experiment and get every information. We will go to next molecule, next I am sorry, next nuclei called boron NMR. Boron has two isotopes, boron 11 and boron 10. We also discuss this when we discuss proton analysis. We are looking for proton coupling to boron. So, again I am repeating boron spin is 3 by 2, abundance is 80 percent and boron 10 is 3 abundance is I mean it should be 20 percent it should be 79.9 I made it 80. So, okay consider this as 80 is to 20 1 is to 4 is the abundance approximately now I am not worried about precise value boron 10 spin is 3. So, if any spin of nuclei like proton or carbon coupled to boron how many peaks you expect? You expect 7 peaks 2 Ni plus 1 N is 3 here I mean N is 1 but spin is 3. So, we are going to get 7 peaks. When it is coupled to boron 11 you get 4 peaks because 2 into 3 by 2 plus so it two, we will get four, only 4 peaks and this boron 11 coupling will give strong peaks 4 peaks of equal intensity. Boron 10 coupling will give 7 peaks which is 20 percent weaker compared to this intensity wise, but of equal intensity 7, seven peaks. This is a simple example, but one thing I want to tell you if you want to do boron enamel you must use quartz enamel tubes. Do not use normal tubes because that could be made up of borosilicate glass and then you are going to get the signal from the enamel tube. So, this is a caution when you are trying to do boron enamel you always use quartz enamel tubes and this is simple molecule BF3 OET2. Coupling to proton is not usually observed even in you know only in exceptional cases like BH4 molecule you can see pro boron proton coupling. Otherwise, coupling to proton is usually not observed generally you know it is so you will get only a single single peak for boron no coupling. But on the other hand as I said if you go for boron BH4 ion when dissolved in water the proton coupled spectrum if you take I am looking at boron 10 boron 10 should give how many peaks I told you it should give 7 peaks there must be another peak somewhere here and here. So, there should be 7 peaks that is what you are going to see, but I am sorry we are not we are, we are not looking at proton we are looking at boron boron coupled to pass pass sorry this interpretation we are not interpreting proton spectrum you should see it is a boron 10 spectrum not proton spectrum. So, our interpretation should be in a different way for boron 10 coupled to proton 4 protons are equivalent 2 Ni plus 1 4 is this one 2 into half plus 1 you are going to get 5 peaks. So, you will get 5 peaks. So, I am sorry this is not both proton spectrum the boron 10 spectrum. So, interpretation is coupling of boron with proton that is what you have to see. So, you get 5 peaks and the separation of adjacent any adjacent peak gives you boron 10 and proton coupling. Go to the boron 11 carefully if you see 
Boron 11 peaks are quite sharper and more sensitive compared to Boron 10. Here also you are looking at the Boron 11 NMR coupled to a proton. How many peaks you should expect? Like in previous example, 4 chemically equivalent protons are coupled to Boron. It is going to give 2 Na plus 1. So, it will be 5 peaks of equal intensity, I mean intensity ratio like this. And this separation gives you 1 bond proton boron coupling. Look at the previous one, 1 bond pro boron 10 proton coupling is about 27 hertz, this is about 65 hertz. So, you one day if just to the boron NMR of this molecule, you get two different spectra, one coupling with boron 10, other is coupling with boron 11. In, ex in a special example like this type of molecule, you can even get boron proton couplings also. Take the another example of this molecule K pot potassium bromine CF3 4 times. How many peaks we expect if I look for boron 11? Now I am looking for boron, looking for coupling with fluorine. Incidentally, as I said, this is also spin off nuclei. There are 3 into 4, 12 equivalent fluorines are there. So, use the 2 Na plus 1 rule 2 into 12 into 3 by 2, boron 11 is spin is 3 by 2. So, you are going to get 13 peaks. If you carefully see, you must get 13 peaks here. Remember, I am looking at boron 11 coupling to fluorine. So, I must get 13 peaks. And these are all expanded here. You see 1, 2, 3 here, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You should expect somewhere here 13 peaks are there. Here. So, 13 peaks are there. And what are the peaks which are mar marked star here? They are coupling with carbon. Carbon is also spin off nuclei. They are carbon 13 satellite. Each peak is split into 2 2 peaks here. They are certain 13 C satellites. <coughs> you understand? So, this in this simple molecule, boron 11 gives you about 13 peaks. Go to the next example. Of course, I, we did not see the boron 10 NMR of this molecule. Does not matter. One or two example to show boron NMR can also be done. And especially with the coupling to proton and fluorine also can be seen. You go to the another example, mercury NMR. Interestingly, mercury has seven stable isotopes. Out of which only two are NMR active. That is mercury 199 and mercury 201, both are NMR active. And especially mercury 199 is what is always a preferred choice, not 201. And that is because this mercury 119 in a spin off nuclei abundance is close to 16.7 percent, about 17 percent abundance is there. So, fairly easy to detect. So, that is why mercury 199 is a preferred choice when you have when you have to detect mercury NMR, HGNMR. This is an example of dimethyl mercury 199 NMR. Now, you see a very single peak you are going to get. Carefully, if you see it is proton decoupled remember there is no coupling you are breaking, breaking all the coupling of mercury with proton but not with carbon so if you look at it carefully what are these these are carbon 13 satellites carbon 13 coupled to mercury is split into this so if you measure separation from this to this you get one bond carbon mercury couplings we have broken proton couplings here. So, you get a single peak with carbon 13 satellites. Okay. What happens if you look at the proton coupled one for the mercury NMR? Proton coupled, how many protons are there now? 2 methyl equivalent 6 protons. So, 6 into half into plus 1 you are how much you are going to get? So, you are going to get 2 into 6 into half plus 1 you are going to get 7 peaks. You count there must be 7 peaks here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 because 2 Ni plus 1 rule you have to apply now N is equal to say N is equal to 6, 2 into spin is equal to half for proton plus 1 you get 7 peaks you get 7 peaks and a separation of any of these adjacent lines if it any two adjacent like lines if you take it gives you mercury 199 and proton coupling which is fairly large about 600 hertz you are going to see. Okay. This is a proton coupled 199 NMR of dimethyl mercury. It is not dissolved in any solvent. It is a neat sample is taken. Neat means 
which is not dissolved in any solvent that is what we do. And what happens if you do the proton decoupled spectrum of this molecule see earlier we took only proton decoupled proton coupled now mercury number with proton decoupling if you do we are going to see carbon 13 satellites what we saw here in the example this has been expanded here very clearly you can see about 686.2 hertz which is coupling between one bond proton and carbon 13 same experiment what we saw in the previous two slides back but only thing is it is expanded parted with a better experiment is then to acquire more scan to see the satellites here their interest was only to see only boron signal so, I mean, it was not acquired for a long time here you can see satellites with enhanced intensity and if you measure the separation you get one bond carbon with um, carbon mercury coupling of 686 hertz okay this is another interesting molecule when you are analyzing multiplicity pattern in proton i showed this as an example here is a if you look at this in the vinyl group all the three fluorines are equivalent this is equivalent inequivalent this is inequivalent this is inequivalent but between the if you take the whole molecule with respect to mercury there is a symmetry this is symmetric with respect this, these two are symmetric equivalent these two are equivalent and this and this are equivalent each of these symmetric fluorine because of their equivalence when it couples with mercury will split into a triplet take for example how we can do that here i will show you here first consider mercury as a single peak now these two fluorine are equivalent splits this into a triplet and these two are equivalent split each of these into a triplet you get nine lines further each of these lines is split into a triplet because of this coupling equivalent they are you know chemically equivalent two fluorines so the symmetric fluorine make this a complex spectrum let us see how it is of course center of this multiplicity correspond to chemical shift of mercury hg190 chemical shift that is the center okay I am I'll remove that so that you will know that uh, this is the triplet large triplet because of coupling between mercury and two bond fluorine here large triplet as I said now this and this chemically equivalent makes each of them into triplet one two three so each line of the triplet is becoming a triplet further see it is not like that is look at this one this one triplet and each of them is another triplet now this three these two makes each of these lines into a triplet like one triplet two triplets and two three triplets so this is nine line nine line nine line so totally how many lines we expect 27 lines with this mercury coupled to symmetric fluorines both of them are chemically inequal each fluorine is individual individually chemically inequivalent because of the symmetry these two fluorine are equivalent these two are equivalent these two are equivalent as a consequence you are going to get 27 lines which is the ultimate triplet of triplet of triplet which is called ttt that's what you are going to get on the other hand if one of the fluorine is replaced with a cf3 group now look at the molecule same previous molecule one of the fluorine is replaced with the cf3 this is the structure this is replaced by a CF3 group. Everything remains same because all are chemically inequivalent with, with respect to mercury. These two are equivalent, these two are equivalent, and these are equivalent. Now, without even looking at the spectrum, we should say what is the pattern we are going to get? This mercury splits because of these two fluorine into a triplet, one to one triplet equal coupling. Okay. Further, it also splits because of this into triplet of triplets that is also fine but there is a long range coupling of this fluorine with this mercury 1 2 3 4 bond that is a equivalent CFT group then this triplet of triplets 9 lines are there each of these 9 lines is further split into CF3 groups 2 CF3 groups it will be a septet very complex molecule spectrum you are going to get see this is a 
triplet of triplet of subtract because this is the chemical shift of mercury one triplet is because of these two each letter of the triplet is, is split to another triplet because of this coupling and then if you carefully see each line of this nine line is a, is a septet because of coupling with two CF threes. This pattern is called triplet of triplet of septets. So, in the intensity pattern we can easily work it out how we get we have already done it earlier how many times we have done we have already discussed the septet pattern this is one is a 16 into 15 to 20 15 6 1 each peak but unfortunately they are not resolved it is very noisy spectrum. But if you carefully do a good experiment and get a better resolution and better signal to noise ratio each of them will be 7 line pattern of this. So, this entire pattern for this mercury is triplet of triplet of septets. So, this is what it is. So, since the time is of nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 15 NMR I am going to take up in the next class. But right now in this today's class we continued with our discussion with the phosphorus. I showed you taking an example of PCL3 when there are phosphorus attached to chlorine like that chlorine has two types of isotopomers chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 with abundance 76 percent and 24 percent and you can think of different possible combinations of isotopomers when all the three chlorine are 35 R are 37 235 137 R 237 and 135 each of them how many possibilities are there we can work out and then we have found out four different types of isotopomers are there. Of course, two isotopomers have three such possibilities intensity gets multiplied by three times. So, when similar to CFCL3 molecule we have observed PCL3 also gives four peaks and the intensity of the peak correspond to uh, statistical distribution of the populations of each of these isotopomers. With that we continued further with boron NMR and I took example of boron 10 and boron 11. Boron 10, 11 has been 3 by 2 give 4 peaks of equal intensity and with 80 percent abundance boron 10 is spin is equal to 3 it gives 7 peaks when it is coupled to spin of nuclei. We took the example of boron BF4 also BH4 ion and then we looked at boron 11 and boron 10 4 equivalent protons split each of them into a pentad and we could get the boron 10 proton boron 11 proton coupling. We took few other examples of the boron molecule also. Then we went into mercury several examples of the mercury. Mercury is again uh, there are several seven isotopes two of them are stable which are NMR active 199 is always a important thing that is a thing which we have to consider 201 we do not need to consider that generally nobody is going to study because it is going to give a broad peak. So, mercury 199 is a preferred choice. We took example of two three molecules including dimethyl mercury looked at the proton spectrum proton decoupled and proton coupled and we saw how many peaks we are going to get everything. So, we could immediately see we could measure silicon proton uh, sorry mercury carbon satellites by doing a you know proton decoupling. Also we took the example of silicon and MR, tetramethyl silicon we saw and we see silicon uh, proton couplings silicon carbon satellites by doing decoupling experiment varieties of examples we took. So, three different nuclei we could study today we could get the analysis spectrum of phosphorus, silicon, boron and mercury all four we could do in this class several examples we do but analysis what I did by taking one or two simple examples but then there will be more complication when you go to a particular molecule but what I gave you was only a idea how to go ahead with do that. So, with this I am going to stop here we will come back and continue with remaining nuclei in the next class thank you very much.